Dr. Death. What a form. And Dr. Death now. And another one. But Missy Hyatt's up on that on the ring apron for no apparent reason. I wish they wouldn't even let her at ringside. Dr. Death with a stampede. Dr. Death with a modified stampede, but he got it. It's preoccupied, as are a lot of men, with Missy Hyatt. wrestlers of all time he is the author of his autobiography how dr death became real life he is the good doctor and he is paying us a house call dr death steve williams doc welcome to the show hey it's great to be here man what's going on up there in philadelphia ah not too much not too much we're very excited to have you I had a lot of callers in the first half of the show that were really excited that you were coming on today well, that's great. I'm glad to be with you guys, man. I just got done a good time. Yeah, I just got done pumping iron for about an hour and a half and uh, going to check out the you know, shopping mall, you know, do a little Christmas shopping, <laughs> check out the the scenery, uh, you know, like the women. <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to be arguing with you over a parking spot. Well, I'll tell you what, buddy, it's the greatest time to go shopping right now during Christmas because all the ladies are out there Christmas shopping. There you go. That's it. That's it. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, right before, I want to ask you this. I didn't even have this written down, but right before I had you on, I had on Scott E. Williams, who uh, co-authored Bill Watts' book. And uh, he was telling me that you were his favorite wrestler growing up. And uh, he used to go to the same Houston Coliseum, I think he said, 30 times to see you wrestle. And he brought up an angle, which he said it was the first time he ever cheered for a heel, and it was with you. It was when uh, you stole Crusher Khrushchev's medal, the gold medal. And uh, yeah. and then Terry Taylor beat him, and they made you give the medal back to Terry Taylor. And Scott said as a wrestling fan, he's thinking, hey, he said he didn't have to give it back to Crusher Khrushchev. Why does he give it, it has to give it back to Terry Taylor? That's right. You know, we did that on TV, too, here in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, at the Boys Hall. I remember it real well. It was when uh, Terry Taylor told me to give me back the medal, and I did. I gave it to him right across the head. <laughs> I slapped a dog wee right out of him, man. It was a great angle, and uh, Scott, he's a great guy, man. Uh, you know what's great right now? I just, uh, I don't tell you, I've been out uh, doing shopping and this and that, and, seen a lot of people that are big uh, wrestling fans right now and they recognize me in the shopping centers and the sams and wherever i go and boy in the last few days i just have had great compliments from some people that that are old mid-south uh, fans that saw me and xr jim duggan uh junkyard dog some of the greats man and just really put over that era and it was great to just uh have a great feeling you know what i mean absolutely Absolutely. Let, let me ask you, you know, I, uh, I started talking at the beginning of the radio show before you came on that uh, you recently uh, won the biggest match of your life, which uh, some of your fans may not even be aware of, and you beat cancer. Well, let me tell you something. That was the toughest guy I ever fought, and that's Mr. Cancer. On uh, 03 of September, I was uh, feeling under the weather. I thought I had a bad cold. You know, I've always had a rough time. Uh, raspy voice but it got really raspy and uh i went to china in january of 04 and uh when i came back uh it was really bad so i went in and they did a biopsy to my uh throat and uh found out that i had throat cancer and uh i was fighting it for uh some time now and uh i just went in for my checkup uh 
three weeks ago, and I'm two years cancer-free. Praise God. God bless you. Congratulations. Well, let me tell you something, buddy. Uh, I died three times out of this situation, so God's got a plan, man. And if you don't believe there's a God, uh, look at me, because I'm a miracle, and God is in the healing uh, business, let me tell you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I lost a parent to cancer, so I can uh, relate, uh, you know, at least... Sorry as, to hear that, I'm really... Um, thank you, thank you. As, as a family, yeah, it's, it's a tough thing. Well, I'll tell you what, man, it really blows me away that I go down to MD Anderson, I see so many people with cancer, but I can't believe we don't have a cure for it. Yeah. yeah. And there's so many people like Lance Armstrong out there collecting money uh, to to beat the, the cancer and I mean there's races I mean there's all things it's a big business but uh, I just can't believe we don't have a have a drug that will fight cancer and I mean we can beat uh, HIV I mean well there's so many things we can do now we can send people up on the moon but we can't beat cancer that just blows me away isn't that something there's got to be something man and you know, I, there is something God God can beat it, man. I really I believe it. You know, uh, mm. I'll tell you when I uh, was diagnosed, man. I uh, I had to fight my life, uh, fight for my life, and uh, my best friend was our good Lord above, and he kept me uh, going through this whole thing. I mean, a couple times I really did. Mm. Didn't know if I was gonna make it, and boy, he perked me right back up. I got so much faith in our Lord now today that. Uh, He's taking me to the levels that I never knew that I had, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now I had uh, I had the cowboy on. I had Bill Watts on a, a few months back, and um, he is uh, he has also uh, found the Lord in his life and wrote a lot about it. Did he um, help you out as a mentor or, or just as uh, in any way for support during your uh, battle with cancer? No, I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, we blown away. Nobody really helped me through this thing except my daughter and my son and my my brother and my family. Wow. Um, I was fighting for my life, you know, and uh, they were all spread around, uh, you know, I was going down to Houston, my family was up here in uh, uh, Santa Shreveport, and uh, I had a brother down in Houston, but I'll tell you what, buddy, uh, the one I really reached out to is uh, God. Mm. I mean, uh, he was my friend, uh, my father, I mean, he was with me 24-7, and uh, if I didn't have him, I'd probably be about 18 feet underneath the ground right now. Wow, wow, unbelievable! What is what a story? And I, I, I would assume that you write a lot about your uh, your battle and your uh, and your faith in your book. Oh yeah, I'll tell you, uh, this book is going to be a great book. I, I really, I'm not just saying that because it says my book, but it's about my life, and uh, I'm not uh, holding any punches. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of guys out there who wrote books, and they don't want to tell the truth. Well, I told the truth, uh, back in our era, the, the 70s and 80s, uh, where drugs was a big part of a lot of wrestlers' life to survive and run the road. Uh, I exposed that, I told people that, uh, how the business was back then, how tough of a uh, boss Bill Watts was, and I don't know how a great boss, uh, Giant Baba was, so. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, probably one of the athletes has accomplished a lot of things a lot of athletes haven't. And I have uh, held every belt in this business. I've been in every major company. I've been a Main Street, uh, I'm a Main Liner. I mean, guys, look at me. I, I even got three belts that I've retired. The UWF <laughs> World Highway title and the Herb Abraham's uh, belts. I mean, come on. Yeah, you really have. You really have. That's a... Uh... That's something else. Uh, you, you know, I know we've talked a little bit, and I know you're a, you're a big college football fan. What do you think about the success of uh, of your buddy Road Warrior Animals kid out there at Ohio State? Well, that was great, man. I uh, I saw I heard somebody told me he was on the sidelines, and I really don't know the just of it. Uh, what is is he getting a coaching job? Or uh, I don't think so. I, I know his son is being projected to go high in the draft. Oh, that'll be great. That'll yeah. be great for him. Uh, I know Animals been. Uh, back and forth with uh, WWE and trying mm -hmm. to hang in there with his brother but uh, I know Joe's gave his life over Christ and he's doing real real well mm, that's, that's great that's great listen you know, I, I don't know if you guys know this but I just got conducted to the Wrestling Hall of Fame no I did not know that yeah it'll be July 14th and the 15th in Waterloo Iowa that's uh, where Dan Gable and 
uh, you know, uh, Ruth Fez and uh, Brad Armstrong. That's the real I deal mean, right uh, there. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be great, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Congratulations to you. Thank you so much. It's uh, just uh, great the book will be out, and uh, then we'll go to the Hall of Fame. And, uh, boy, I just say, I can't, uh, I can't thank uh, God for so much of the things he's done for me right now. I'm just so blessed. Wow, that's uh, that's amazing. Uh, I I know I can't read. I can't wait to uh, to read the book and uh, and the whole story. Listen, I want to ask you. Uh, I got to take a quick time out, but I'm going to ask if you can hold on uh, throughout the break. Then when we come back, we'll uh, start hitting up uh, different parts of your career. Great. All right, that'll be fantastic. Well, we are being honored and blessed by an appearance by the good doctor, Doctor Death Steve Williams. He has an autobiography coming out. How Doctor Death became real life. You can get that on Amazon.com. I have a link up at my website right now over at ProWrestlingRadio.com. We'll pick up where we left off with the good doctor. We come back from this quick timeout. You are listening to the radio show in a couple of different places. One, live on the internet on WBCB1490.com. On my website, archived at ProWrestlingRadio.com. One on the air on WBCB1490 AM. And here's Eric. Uh, thank you very much, Bill Melody. And uh, don't forget... That following me at 1.30 will be Bill Melody and the Country Music Hall up until 6 o'clock with all the great country music exclusively here on WBCB. And for more information, check out BillMelody.com. Then at 6, he will turn it over to the Saint After Dark. And then Bill returns tomorrow morning from 5 to 10 a.m. All right, we are speaking with the good doctor, Dr. Death, Steve Williams. And, uh, Steve, you know, a question that I get asked a lot by callers that call into the show, and I've had, uh, I've been very fortunate to ask both Dusty Rhodes and Phil Watts this question, is to why the, the feud did not happen, the invasion angle with uh, the UWF and you and Ric Flair, and were you really surprised that they didn't uh, do anything with the two of you at the time? Do you know the truth about the situation? Oh, well, I've heard Bill Watts' version, I've heard Dusty's version, so I'm sure the truth's in the middle. <laughs> Well, let me tell you the truth. Uh, when you're scared, say you're scared. If you're a mouse, squeak like a mouse. And that's what Ric Flair was when he wrestled me. Gotcha. They were going to unificate the belts, uh, UWF. I guess Ric Flair's belt. I went in there and I wrestled him one time. And he uh, squealed like a doggone big man. He was. He thought, uh, he, thought he, gets, uh, he went against the toughest guy in the business, and he sure did. Wow. I gave him uh, a couple of the good uh, doctors right and left, and, uh, you know, he couldn't uh, go against the power. You know, uh, Ric Flair has wrestled everybody in the world, never had a complaint, never. He, I mean, he fought some battles. I've seen him. Mm-hmm. And then he went up against Dr. Death. He couldn't hold his own end because he knew he'd lose the belt. Mm. And that's why there was a confrontation that Ric Flair did not want to keep that angle going. Because he had sex again with, uh, with, uh, Jim, I mean, uh, oh, uh, Crockett. I was going to say Jim Cornette. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Crockett, uh, that he, he, he canceled that whole, uh, angle out. And I think it's funny when a guy has been all over the world, fought the toughest Japanese guys, I mean, uh, the great Americans, and then all of a sudden uh, he goes against... Sorry about that, I was outside on uh, my gym talking to you. Oh, okay, okay. It was like it went by, but uh, he has fought everybody, man, and then all of a sudden he goes in his doctor death and starts squealing. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, you know... I have, I have a lot of respect for Ric Flair, too. But I'll tell you what, uh, I'd love to go on a, a great angle with him, just like a couple of uh, people that I should have went against this uh, Stone Cold. I was promised a six-month uh, angle with him with the WWE. Mm-hmm. That fell through, too, but I, I ain't going to cry over those spilled milk. I've, I've accomplished a lot of things that a lot of these wrestlers have never accomplished. Absolutely, absolutely. Let me let me ask you. Uh, you know, speaking of uh, a little bit of the WWE, are you uh, are you surprised at how powerful your uh, former partner and opponent uh, John Laurinaitis has become in the United States? Yeah, it is amazing. Uh, it's a blessing, you know. Johnny's uh, done real well. Uh, he's holding his end, you know. Uh, I don't know if the, the company's holding its own end, but they're trying to keep it above water. Johnny's done great, man. I gotta give him a pat on the back. He's done real good. Uh, 
It even gave me the opportunity right now. I'm training the WWE kids and the developmental group in Atlanta, uh, Deep South, and uh, Louisville. And so that's a, that's a blessing for me, too. Uh, you guys can imagine, during this cancer, I hadn't worked for three years. Wow. So you can imagine what they did financially. Oh, yeah. So for Johnny to give me a spot to train these guys, that was a great blessing to give back to the business, what the business gave to me. And uh, I really enjoy uh, doing this because the kids really respect me. And uh, I'm trying to teach them the art of the business. Everybody can do a power bomb. Everybody can jump off the top rope. But there's an art to this business. Until they go, until these kids get it, they ain't gonna make it up there to WWE. Is that how you would explain uh, how how great your matches with uh, Kenta Kobashi turned out to be? Just the timing of everything that you guys did together in your matches. Well, I know you probably saw that match in 1990. I think it was 1990, no, 1999. Where we went uh, 20, 29 minutes and 30 seconds. Oh yeah. Best match of the year. Oh yeah. Funny, uh, if you don't call that timing and uh, the skill that both of us went through, I mean, that was a heck of a match. I watch it uh, probably once every month, man, because it's just a great, exciting match, you know, to watch. And, you know, even working with Mizawa, Koala, I mean, all them guys, uh, it was all timing. It wasn't uh, like uh, trying to pre- uh, make the match out in the locker room. I mean, they spoke Japanese, I spoke English, so, <laughs> you know, we went out there and we battled each other and uh, we complimented each other in the ring. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, I, I enjoyed working for Japan. I mean, I enjoyed 18 years of it. No complaints here. And you were just working for Japan uh, right before um, you had your battle with cancer with the IWA, weren't you? Yeah, well, uh, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, you know, I got a spot for Pride. Mm. I don't know if anybody knew this, but uh, they hired me to come in and fight the Russian. Uh, uh, Amelianko? Yeah, from Pride. And uh, so I went ahead and did it. I was fired up. I was gunned up. And then uh, the night before the match, my daughter called me from USA, and I was in Japan, and she said that I had cancer. Wow. Uh, you can imagine what that did to me. Uh, all I could think is that I was going to die. Wow. I didn't know if there's any more living here or what was going to go on with my life. I went in that ring, and I literally, literally got knocked out in 23 seconds. Yeah. I took four knees to the head. I was still standing. I went out and hit the mat. I was still standing, but uh, the refs called the match. But uh, I look at that match, and I go, geez, that's amazing that I could even stand after I took four knees to the head. But... My game plan was gone. Mm. As soon as I was told I had cancer, I, uh, I was done. I didn't have any, any of the doctor in me, so, you know, um, I have no crying over spilled milk mm -hmm. either. That was a great challenge that, that I got to go in there and, uh, and try the pride and, uh, I wish I didn't go through cancer. I wish I could come back and fight him again, but hey, you know what? Now I'm fighting people to Christ and what a blessing that is. Wow. Let, let, let me ask you, uh, just out of curiosity, what was your game plan uh, to go in there against uh, Fedor? Well, what it was is to bring him down to my size. Uh, I mean, not my size, but bring him down to the mat. Mm -hmm. And uh, amateur wrestling, take them legs out from underneath him. And what happened was, uh, when, uh, when I got that cancer in my mind, what I did is I shot forward instead of shot outside on him to single leg. My mind was just wasn't in the game. When I went forward, that knee was right there for for a good head shot, you know. Wow. But I was I was so geared up, and all my uh, game plan was working at practice. So when I was working over in Japan, everything was going great. It just uh, it went out right out the door after I heard that big C word. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, let, let me ask you this, uh, if you can, I know I only have five minutes left with you, but one of the most infamous stories involving yourself is, um, in your earlier years, the car accident that, um, that you were in with Rick Steiner where you saved somebody's life. Well, I'll tell you guys, man, I'm so blessed. Look at, look at that story. Mm -hmm. I saved a small army guy, uh, from uh, a burning flame. Two people burned up, uh, two other guys got, uh, 
crush in the car and we saved one guy from Fort Polk uh, 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 Air Base. I guess it was Air Base. It was an Army Base down there. But, boy, that was a great deal, man. And, you know, I got to tell you guys this, man. I don't know if everybody knows this, but uh, you can book me off my website. I'm out there ministering uh, down around churches doing my testimony. We're in the boys' clubs. Uh, so if you guys ever uh, need somebody to come up and talk to your church or some boys' clubs, I'm out there, and I love to tell my testimony. Absolutely. What's your website? It's oakstampede.com. O-K-L-A-S-T-A-M-P-E-D.com. Awesome. I'll throw that up on my website as well if anybody, uh, you know, had, didn't have a chance to write it down or uh, anything like that. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, it's a great website. You guys can check out my whole uh, history. Yeah, no problem, no problem. I know there are, you know, you still have a, you still have a lot of fans out there. And, uh, you know, you were talking a lot. I know I only have you for a couple more minutes, but we were talking about your uh, potential match with Fedor and, you know, MMA. What do you think about the whole explosion over the last couple of years, especially in this country of mixed martial arts? Well, I think it's amazing, man. I see it on TV that uh, the bride's coming here and mm -hmm. all that. I think it's great, you know. They're getting, people are getting tired of the same old uh, same old thing. And, you know, and I'm not cutting down WWE. It's, it's got its own special fan. But people want to see that hard fighting again, you know. Yeah. Like old Mid-South used to be, boy. We used to beat the crowd at each other, right. you know. Yeah, definitely, definitely. What, uh... What uh, when you first got into Mid South, um, how important was it to the rest of your career to be surrounded by those kind of guys and to be led by a guy like Bill Watts? Well, I'll just tell you, I had a lot of respect for the business. Mm -hmm. I protected the business. Uh, when you have a uh, boss like Bill Watts, and I was a protege, and when the guy told me when he first met me, he says, "This is how you make a living. This is how you take care of your family." You protect it just like you protect your family. And that's the way I did it. I that, that business. But, uh, it took care of me and my family, uh, to deal with, uh, like I saw Jim Duggan, Ted DiBiase, Terry Taylor, even, uh, Ugandan warrior, Kamala. Matter of fact, I'm running a show here in Shreveport, January 19th. And, uh, we're bringing in some studs, uh, to come for that show. I was just talking to Kamala, man, and just think about all the great matches we had back there with Ernie Ladd. I mean, yeah. King Kong Bundy, man, was that the greatest? Yeah, yeah. It was my, I mean, it's my favorite stuff. It was my favorite stuff to watch growing up, uh, to read about in the magazines and to watch on the videotapes now. I mean, even today, you know, so many years later, it all still holds up. I uh, about the feud against the Rock and Roll Express and the Midnight Express. Yep. You don't see that now, you know. I mean, the way I describe it to everybody, you know. Hey, w Doc. Hey, hey, Doc. I hate to cut you off, but I just realized right. I'm uh, I'm up against the clock. But I'd love to have you back on sometime. Hey, I'd love to come back anytime you want me to come rap with you and your friends and your family. Hey, come on, I'll talk to them. Uh, most definitely. Listen, Doc. Congratulations. Uh, you know, to everything. I mean, boy, what a what a blessed life you're having out there right now. Praise God. I'll tell you what. I am so blessed and. Uh, I thank all the fans for all the emails and all the prayers, man. Uh, you people are great. Well, thank you very much. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Thanksgiving weekend. I'll throw up your uh, information on my website, and we'll have you back down the line. Thank you, and everybody have a wonderful holiday and a safe one, and God bless you all. Wow, thank you very much. Steve Williams, thanks again. Thank you. All right, take care. Dr. Death, Steve Williams, checking in on Pro Wrestling Radio. What a... What an incredible, incredible story. Well, that will about do it for me. I'm going to turn it into another incredible story. Bill Melody with the Country Music Hall up until 6 o'clock. Then Brooke St. Ives with the Santa After Dark. And then Bill's back tomorrow morning from 5 to 10 a.m. And I will be back next Saturday at 12.05. And we're going to do another extended 90 minutes schedule permitting. We'll get another guest on. We'll get another analyst. And we'll have a lot of fun. And as Bill Watts would say, we'll hook them up. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you next Saturday. Everybody, we'll see you next Saturday. Everybody, we'll see you next Saturday. Everybody. Some of the greats, man, just really put over that era. And it was great to just uh, have a great feeling. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let, let me ask you, you know, I, uh, I started talking at the beginning of the radio show before you came on that uh, you recently uh, won the biggest match of your life, which uh, some of your fans may not even be aware of, and you beat cancer. 
Well, let me tell you something. That was the toughest guy I ever fought, and that's Mr. Cancer. On uh, 03 of September, I was uh, feeling under the weather. I thought I had a bad cold. You know, I've always had a rough, uh, raspy voice, but it got really raspy. And uh, I went to China in January of 04, and uh, when I came back, uh, it was really bad. So I went in, and they did a biopsy to my uh, throat, and... Uh, found out that I had throat cancer and uh, I was fighting it you guys man I just got done a good time yeah I just got done pumping iron for about an hour and a half and uh, gonna check out the you know, shopping mall you know do a little Christmas shopping <laughs> check out the the scenery uh, you know like the women <laughs> I don't think anybody's gonna be arguing with you over a parking spot well, I'll tell you what, buddy, it's the greatest time to go shopping right now during Christmas because all the ladies are out there Christmas shopping. There you go. That's it. That's yeah. it. <laughs> hey, right before, I want to ask you this. I didn't even have this written down, but right before I had you on, I had on Scott E. Williams, who uh, co-authored Bill Watts' book. And uh, he was telling me that you were his favorite wrestler growing up. And uh, he used to go to the same Houston Coliseum, I think he said, 30 times to see you wrestle. And he brought up an angle, which he said it was the first time he ever cheered for a heel, and it was with you. It was when uh, you stole Crusher Khrushchev's medal, the gold medal. And uh, yeah. and then Terry Taylor beat him, and they made you give the medal back to Terry Taylor. And Scott said as a wrestling fan, he's thinking, hey, he said he didn't have to give it back to Crusher Khrushchev. Why does he give it, it has to give it back to Terry Taylor? That's right. You know, we did that on TV, too, here in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, at the Boys Hall. I remember real well was when uh, Terry Taylor told me to give me back the medal, and I did. I gave it to him right across the head. <laughs> I slapped a dog wee right out of him, man. It was a great angle, and uh, Scott, he's a great guy, man. Uh, you know what's great right now? I just, uh, I don't tell you, I've been out uh, doing shopping and this and that, and, seen a lot of people that are big uh, wrestling fans right now and they recognize me in the shopping centers and the Sam's and wherever I go and boy in the last few days I just have had some great compliments from some people that are that old Mid-South uh, fans that saw me and I saw Jim Duggan, uh, Junkyard Dog. Dr. Death, what a form, and Dr. Death now, and another one, but Missy Hyatt's up on that, on the ring apron for no apparent reason, I wish they wouldn't even let her at ringside. Dr. Death with a stampede, Dr. Death with a modified stampede, but he got it, and preoccupied, as are a lot of men with Missy Hyatt. Well, that's great. I'm glad to be with you. 